So Rick Shant is back, and now it's open for punishment because what I've told you and what I'm sure someone advised you guys, what happens with the cancel culture, all these young, pathetic mob members that love destroying anyone they can because they have done nothing wrong. They are perfect human beings, and we should bow down to them because they're so, so young. And they're so intelligent because they've experienced life, not. Uh, they just they just know more because all their fancy education, I think. I, I'm not sure. And a lot of others are just there for the ride because they like being part of a big group. They do. They're different. So Rick Chance is back, and now we're going to deal with craziness. So yesterday we dealt with the whole... Um, they're not going to host because they want they want they want to uh, the LGBTQ community to forgive, and I told you they will not. They they won't, and when I say the LGBTQ, uh, the social justice warriors that are thinking for them are saying you can't do this and um, this is unacceptable and it's going to blow up in your face because they won't go away until you smack them in the face. I like that you brought Rick back, but now you have to deal with it. You're going to have to deal with it. So here we go. So this article, this dirt bag, uh, I think it's named Side Ziegler. He's a horrible human being. These media people, you know, they want to paint the story however they want. Look how he paints the story. Coach Rick Shant is returning to the pitch after defending homophobia. This time he wants to build inclusion. He didn't defend homophobia. He didn't have all the information. That's why I'm angry. There's one thing if it, everything was factual and it was loud and we heard it and everyone knew what baddie boy meant and all that stuff. It, it was, it, he was protecting his player who said he didn't do it. And it was so much confusion at the time. But this is how we're going to paint because, you know, uh, he's going to get clicks. And, you know, it's going to be awesome. So the article says by this uh, dirtbag of the media, three weeks after dismissing the impact of homophobic language in professional soccer match. Not true. That is a lie. So if you read into that and think, oh, that, that is true, this guy who didn't do the research, and this is why you can't trust people like this. I get paid to do this. You trust people like me that don't get paid, that lose money by even time and money running this thing. So this dirt bag uh, says, Phoenix Rising FC manager Rick Shant's team suspension is being lifted and is returning to full-time duties with the club. In an exclusive interview with OutSports, Shant said he, was, uh, he is an involving man and will use his position to proactively advance LGBTQ inclusion in sports and society at large. It's been an awakening, Chance told OutSports. It's really opened my eyes. I feel like I can be a better human being if I learn more things about the LGBTQ community. It's becoming more important to me every day. These are things Rick has to say to bow down. And no matter what you say, Rick Chance, no matter what you say, they are going to remember this forever and punish you because you are actually stating that you were wrong. You weren't wrong, Rick Chance. And I get why you're saying you're wrong because you're trying to save your job right now. You did nothing wrong. You might have uh, misspoke a little bit, but are we all psychics? Do we know what's going through your mind? And, and the reason I get so frustrated with this, and I, I pose the question to all you, uh, all you people that want to crucify Everybody. What Rick Shant says, and, and it covers, covers it in the story, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, what Rick Shant said in the heat of the moment through a discussion with Landon Donovan. Landon Donovan knew what he was doing before the game. It was very evident. He even stated before the game that he was going to do this. Not to Rick, not to the rising. You know, he, he was just waiting for any opportunity, and he found one. And took it. No one was prepared for that. Except Landon Donovan and his players. And by the way. What Landon Donovan did. By making a scene. Punish so many of those guys. The opportunity to elevate. 
They had a chance to go into the playoffs. They had a chance to really do something, but the, the season was going to be canceled. They, it was canceled for them the, the week prior when they uh, took away the 1-1 tie and took a forfeit because they didn't want to be part of the game, um, punishing their team, having no ability to continue the playoffs. Who in their right mind would want to be managed in that situation? Fight for what is right, but don't deprive uh, players opportunity. When you're a professional athlete, you have a small window, and they just took a significant window out. Playoffs matter. What you do in the playoffs matter. So if any of those players had the ability to actually do something special and win a championship in their first year of the organization, they had a real chance to elevate. I mean, say that happened. Say we knew that was going to happen and he took it away. Because we don't know. Those kids are losing contracts, livelihood. They have families. That, that's where I'm angry. We, we, we're, robbing, we're robbing people to follow what Landon wants to do at the time. He wants to make significant change throughout the world by doing something so, so impactful so he can be on ESPN and, 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 and further his social justice status. By punishing, I, if I was a player or a parent of one of the, or whatever affiliated, I would sue Landon Donovan and the organization for denying them. They, they had contracts to compete. Were there, were there playoff bonus, bonuses there? Were they paid for that? Those are things we need to know. It's, it's important to know. But back, back to Rick Shantz. What he said, which we'll cover in detail in a second, you have to take the, the thought process of really thinking about you. Have you ever misspoken? You didn't mean something completely or whatever you said was totally misconstrued in a different light. I mean, has it never happened to you ever? The amount of emotions, the amount of confusion that was coach uh, chance was going through is a different level. And he shouldn't apologize. He didn't lie. He was confused about what's going on and he had to change it up because the social justice nut jobs were taking over. It's, it, it's not right. It's not cool. Um, we, we're putting ourselves in a situation where you're not allowed to speak. Can't speak. Because if you misspeak, you're not allowed to go back and correct yourself at all. Reading on. To recap, in a September 30th USL championship match between the Phoenix Rising and San Diego Loyal, the, the latter's Colin Martin, the rare uh, pu publicity out gay man in professional sports, claimed Rising player Junior Flemings directed a gay slur at him. Loyal manager Landon Donovan asking rising manager Rick Shantz to move Fleming from the match. Shantz refused. Why did he refuse? Why did he refuse? He refused because he said he didn't do it. And no one on the team was saying he did it. We still haven't got the details in the, of the investigation yet. We don't, even, we don't even know the details of it. Maybe you do. Comment and let me know. Quote, come on, man, don't make a big scene, Chance says, dismissing the impact of the gay slur. No, that is a lie. That is a lie. You can look at my uh, past YouTube. I'll, I'll have a link on this uh, video to, to go back. He did not. He thought they were, he, go, he goes, this is not about race. And then let, it was a quick, he was just saying things in, in, or in the timing of it. There wasn't enough time to process as Rick is doing it. Landon's interrupting him as he's finishing his talk. We're not looking at that. They're just looking what, what sells on his story, and he doesn't know the details at all. At the start of the second half with the Loyal up 3-0, 2-0, the Loyal players walked off the pitch and forfeited the match, ending their playoff hopes. So th this just puts this article completely out. Because he didn't do his research. This guy is a dirtbag. He found an opportunity. Hey, I can get a lot of social justice nut jobs to click and read it. So I will, I will make more money. This is the media at this finest. He said at the start of the second half with the loyal up 3-0, he's a liar. And he's going to have to be stated a liar because he didn't do his research. You're a, uh, a pathetic journalist. Do your freaking job. Okay. Coach Cameron, I'll do my job. So here's the research he refused to do. 
Just Google it, my friend. This is on Google. So the final score is 3-0 because that's what a forfeit uh, requires. But the score at halftime was actually 3-1. 3-1 in favor of San Diego. And then that's when everything exploded. So here's the basic stats. We're down by two. And then uh, the rising scores a goal in the 45th minute. And in the same minute, not too uh, uh, right off the kickoff, they draw a penalty kick, I believe, and uh, score it, make it 3-1 at halftime. That's what happened. That is your facts that that reporter didn't do. Seed Zieg, Ziegler or whatever his name is. Um, that guy didn't do his job. And I get you have to put, up, put out stories, but when you're trying to destroy another human being, have some journalistic integrity. Just a little bit. This isn't Donald Trump. This is, this is a man that has a family and he's trying to, trying to uh, uh, move on his career. I mean, it, he is a good human being and we're going to destroy him because you have to get a, a story out. And I get, oh, that's part of Rick's job. You know, dealing with lies and the way uh, the world is right now, believing the media the way we do is unacceptable. And journalists need to be, they need to be attacked. We need good information. We need good journalists and less information. But we got to have the clicks. All right. So at the start of the second half with the Loyal up 3-0, that is a lie. 3-1, 3-1, the loyal players in a two-goal lead. The, mo- the, the most dangerous lead to have is by two. Loyal players walked off the pitch and forfeited the match, ending their playoff hopes, and I wish the Rising went and scored when they walked off. That would have been awesome. It was a statement of epic proportions. Rising have since abandoned the points they've earned for the forfeit win. What, just yesterday, they still are at what they're... Uh, the situation they're in. But anyways, both Shantz and Fleming were suspended. Uh, Fleming's who denies the use, use the slur. Oh, well, finally they're talking about what we're hearing. So, and, and for all you social justice nut jobs that want to crucify Rick Shantz and stuff, uh, when your child, if you ever have one, uh, when you have a child and they come to you and, and uh, another angry adult says, Hey, he, he threw a rock at my car. And he says, no, you better punish your child because we have to believe whomever. We don't want facts. We just want to punish. Reading on uh, was also put on administrative leave by the club throughout the end of the contract. Now, Shant is on his way back to com- uh, competition. Since the incident, Shant has been on, on a listening tour. He said that on the pitch that night, he had no idea that what he said was problematic. None. Growing up in the 80s and 90s, Chance told OutSports that he was raised in an era in a location where homophobic language was commonplace and generally viewed as accepted. While it may be hard to believe, he maintains that he just didn't know. After the incident, Chance said he truly wanted to understand the LGBTQ community better. His job was uh, in the balance, no doubt, yet he said he wanted to understand his mistake beyond the matter of keeping his job. He wanted to be a better person in the community and for his family. Seeing him back in the role with the club so soon after the incident will be tough pill to swallow for some people. Yeah, the, the weak, um, weak people, weak-minded uh, human beings that just want punishment. And no, no, uh, no justice or anything. And, and let's go back for a second. Um, so he said, since the incident, Chance has been on a listening tour. He said that on the pitch that night, he had no idea. So right now, there's no quotations. He's he's manipulating the story to fit his narrative, whatever that is, which is crucify somebody, and that's what he's going to do. And and unless it's quoted, and even if it's quoted, I'm probably need to verify it from this guy. See, uh, the club has advanced to the USL Championship semifinals to be played on Saturday. Too many, it will look like yet another sport organization sweeping it yet under another incident of homophobia under the proverbial rug. Yeah. (laughs) Does that statement not just prove what I've been saying? Does it not? Rising. Rise up. Ownership. Administration. Just 
the, the office of the rising. Do, do you not see what's happening? They will never forgive you. Whether you're right, wrong, or indifferent, they have you as their mark. They'll never forgive you. Stop backing down. Adding Rick is good, even though that puts him in a compromised situation. That's good, but you better fight for him. You better fight for him and stop, stop catering to the mob. They're never going to forgive you, so move on. Move on. Frankly, that was my reaction when I first heard the news. Well, I advocated for Chance to, be, to not be fired. I was skeptical on his return to the sideline on Monday. Okay, so how long? How long should he be punished? Tell us, um, Judge. Then I got the chance to talk to him. There was a genuine natu- uh, nature to his tone and a sincere willingness to listen and change. Rooted in love for his family and a need to be a better person in today's society, he couldn't have been more remorseful or apologetic. I apologize, quote, this is a quote, I apologize because I was unaware of how my actions hurt so many people. He told me on Monday afternoon, shortly after a team meeting, until I realized what my unconscious biases are and the fact that I, I just tolerated the LGBTQ community, I just didn't realize that tolerating isn't the same as accepting. So that's interested. Interesting. Um, Quoting on, continuing on, tolerating is not inclusion. So I would say that given, given my unconscious and conscious biases and the inability to pay attention to the world at large, my eyes have been open and thankfully in a public forum. Now I have the position where I can do more. So Rick is working so hard for his job because he has a family. He, you know, what's he going to do if he gets fired for this? He'll be blackballed. No one's going to hire him because this is stuck to him. And unconscious, he kept saying unconscious biases. He doesn't even know what's going on. So somehow he's been rooted in homophobia, homophobia over a conversation which... He did not address about defending homophobia. He's just, it's confusing. And that is, isn't that what they do? Isn't that what the social justice people do? They they survive on confusion and gotcha right after it. It's unacceptable and you can't can't do this. It, It has to be stopped. Has to be stopped. Reading on. Is the sudden 180 by chance sincere? 180 from what? This, ladies and gentlemen, I don't fight for Rick Chance. I fight, I'm fighting and getting upset about this, and I'm emotionally triggered because we we the future of our children are gonna be so scared to speak up and do anything because the uh the social justice warriors, the mob, the mob mentality is to seek and destroy, and they don't care. It, and for the ones that don't know me, and for the ones that actually got to this point with me uh, on the podcast, a mob murdered my great-great-great-grandfather at Hans Mill in Missouri. Not only did he murder him, they, they literally... And it's documented in books in our, everywhere. When Governor Boggs put an extermination order on the Mormons, what happened? A militia built up, a mob went out, found some Mormons at uh, Hans Mill, where my grandfather was. And not only did they kill him, they before he died, they plucked out his eyeballs and urinated in his eye socket. That's a real story. That is true. That's what mobs do in the 1800s. Mobs are evil. Whether you're behind a keyboard and joining a mob, you're evil. That's what mobs do. There's never been a good situation. Oh, this, this mob was re- very, very good this time. They lose the sense of reality. When you have a group of numbers that just go, they just follow. They're a bunch of sheep. You're sheep. You're freaking sheep. Continuing on. Time will tell with Shant. I made the 
I made that clear to him on our phone call, but my gut tells me after our conversation that he knows he messed up. He knows he perpetuated homophobia in society and in sports in that uh, that truly hurt people, and he sincerely wants to make amends. He has no choice. In the situation is now, he should have never apologized. So Rick Chance is in big trouble because for the rest of his life, he does one thing wrong or misspeak or anything. He is screwed. He looks at you wrong. He is screwed. You should have never apologized. You should have fought. You weren't wrong, but now that you admitted it, it's going to stick to you forever because it, it, you, you now, it's like if you went through the process of being in a court of law and a judge and jury hammered you, it's on your record. Sometimes you can get it expunged, exp, yeah, expunged, but not with these people. Now they are the judge and jury, and you just gave them documentation. And of course, they kind of manipulated the documentation um, based on what you said. And now... They have you forever, Rick Shantz, forever. You should have never admitted to anything because you did nothing wrong. You did nothing wrong. It was unconscious. Your unconscious thought will punish you forever. This is, uh, it's called insanity. And that's where we live. And just in a world that doesn't make sense anymore. Uh, reading on, he wants to be part of the solution and rising very clearly wants that as well. The club is demanding it. He told me about talking with a rising fan, a straight man who, who has a teenage daughter who, uh, come out to her family. He told me that a conversation opened his eyes because he has a, a young daughter too. And the idea of creating a future in which she or her friends may not feel good about being themselves, whether they are LGBTQ or not hurt him personally. It was very powerful and it forced me to say I'm sorry to say I'm sorry to, to his daughter and the young kids and who have heard my heard my actions and now feel that they they can't be who they are. That was hard. And you can't be who you are, Rick. Because even though everything that's happened isn't you, it was your unconscious. We didn't you didn't know you're doing it. The confusion made you apologize for something you shouldn't apologize for. Chance has talked to a lot of people across the LGBTQ community in the last couple of weeks in it all in effort to understand the impact of his mistakes and the struggles of the community he admits he has not understood for the most of his life. Reading on, part of that has been reaching out on Twitter to various rising fans who publicly scolded him for his actions, and they won't stop, Rick. They will not stop to both apologize and listen. One of those people in particular has uh, stuck in his mind. This is how he gets out of this, apparently. But they... Re uh, I'll get my final thoughts in a second. I want to read the rest of this. That gay woman told him very clearly that his actions hurt her personally. It was hard to he uh, for him to hear. Of course, it's hard to hear when you're being abused and accused for things of your unconscious uh, thoughts. Shoot. You want, to ex you want to get out everyone's unconscious thoughts? Freak. We're all in trouble. I feel it's important for me to listen, Shant says. I'm 46 years uh, of unconscious and conscious bias to figure out of out and change. And it's important to get out in the community and be an advocate and an ally. And I can do it, uh, do that until I learn more. He talked to Landon Donovan, the soccer superstar who's a complete joke, and I hope he gets sued by his players, and loyal coach with whom Shant had argued during the match which he should always argue with, before joining the Loyal Donovan has a team captain of the LA Galaxy and a teammate of Robbie Rogers, who is publicly out gay man well with the club. Chance also called Colin Martin. Rick has apologized to me personally, and I accept the apology as genuine, Martin said in a statement. We all come to our e education on issues at different times, and he is beginning to understand the pain and disappointment he caused, to, uh, caused his team, the fans, and the LGBT community. He did nothing wrong. How, how can you be in the wrong if you want all the facts? You're not allowed to have the facts. They created confusion. This isn't acceptable. This is not acceptable. We cannot be, be functioning this way. We cannot have a society that's dictated by one side. That's why we have a judge and jury. The reason the United States exists and the reason the Constitution was created is to avoid this whole mob mentality. They left 
England. And now I, I don't care. Just I don't care about your views. Oh, they took the native lands and all that. It doesn't matter. The the point of the humans existence has always been based on freedom. Everybody, whether you lost your freedoms or you know, it, it doesn't matter. Everybody wants freedom, freedom of opportunity. And when I say opportunity, to be able to tell your side, but you can't anymore. And the one thing you have to know, I, Rick Shant should hold to his guns. But he wasn't allowed to. And I guarantee when he's in the room, the ownership, they're agreeing with him. And uh, the GM and stuff, they were agreeing with him. But we can't. Politically, we can't. Eventually, someone has to step out and say, no more. Let them kick and scream. You have to do that. Somebody stand up. Everyone's worried about, you know, not being able to do things. And this, this makes it not worth it having a professional organization of any kind. You know, punish people for their mistakes, sure. There has to be accountability. But you can't just manufacture it. You can't just assume. There has to be a process. There has to be. This will never go away, as I've been stating, forever. The conversations have been eye-opening, Shan said, in part because of how willing people in the community have been to be honest and at the same time give him a second chance. No, they're not, Rick. They're killing you right now. Right now. Anger and hurt have come through in every conversation, yet the LGBTQ people he's spoken to have all seen the power of redemption and the possibility that he could become a true agent of positive change and inclusion. He is just burying himself. Burying. He's not going to be able to get out of it. Right now, based on this article... He's guilty. He's not guilty. He's not guilty. He's being forced into feeling guilty through a ton of confusion. It's a brilliant play by the mob, and you just have to understand what they do. This is what they create confusion, and they all attack you. I will not back down. I'd rather die than allow uh, a bunch of mob members to dictate a new world of when I say new world, a new world of actually having the ability to defend yourself. This is defend by social media. This is attacked by social media. This is not uh, the real world at all. And it's disgusting, disgusting. We're, we're, We're just destroying people nonstop, reading on. Is it too early for Chance to be back on the sideline? Because he hasn't been reformed because he admitted guilt. Of course, it's too early. He's a criminal. Yet the question remains, should a coach who so casually dismissed the impact of homophobic language be back on the sideline just three weeks after doing so? See, it was his unconscious supposed behavior that he was drilled in in uh, the uh, classes he had to take to learn that he is the problem. Shoot. Shoot. This is all BS. And for the ones that are reading into this uh, and just think that I'm just absolutely crazy and stuff, no, I'm not. Not even close. I'm, sp- I'm so spot on that your head should be spinning how basic this is. It's basic. Shouldn't apologize, Rick. Shouldn't. Hold up your guns and sue. You did nothing wrong. But now you're admitting it. Now you can't even sue. You can't do anything. You got screwed. So how is it possible that the criminal, Rick Shant, is um, reformed? You can't reform that quick. To his credit, Shant will admit the personal journey is only a beginning. He has a long way to go before he's the LGBTQ supporter he wants to be. See, he's guilty. Despite that, he thinks that going to, on this journey while simultaneously coaching his players and doing all, all out in the open in front of them and the public can be help bring everyone along on this journey. Showing the willingness to learn, to improve, to make mistakes, to fix them. That's what we ask our athletes to do all the time. We ask our athletes to uh, access, analyze practice, to become better players, and now I get to prove it. I get to live it. Martin agrees. Oh, yay. I see no reason not to give him my blessing and an opportunity to prove that someone can change, Martin said. The sooner Rick is back working with his team and our league, the sooner... Uh, he can begin his role as an ally in advocating LGBTQ uh, equality and acceptance in professional sports. How confusing. 
Because what Rick was doing, what, what Rick was doing, he was defending a black person, giving him the opportunity to have his opportunity to, to have a jury. Uh, he, he wanted the opportunity to explain himself. He said he didn't do it. He wrote a letter. So African-Americans don't matter? Black people don't matter? It, it, I don't get it. We punish one to, crucif- uh, to help another, but we're destroying another. Where do we get? We got nowhere. I don't know if any of that makes sense. Well, we got nowhere. It's always people being attacked. But there's no nothing solving, and nothing's being solved right now. Oh shoot, uh, I I don't want to read anymore. I'm done. I'm done. I can't do it. It hurts reading this man's manipulated article. He he went in this article hoping Rick Shantz would give him a good quote to destroy him. That's what happened, and he manufactured what he thought without quotes. Of who Rick is. Rick clearly was manipulated into saying un- unconsciously, I must have been homophobic. He's not. He's not. Rick Shant is a kind human being that has offended as little, you know, little amount of people than any- anyone else on this earth. He, he is a stand-up guy, very professional, and he got screwed and made a mistake. And the mistake was he admitted somehow he made an unconscious, he didn't know he did it, but apparently he did. He was confused, and this is what they tell you to do. This is what they tell you to do. You know what? And I'm glad I'm speaking about this. I'm glad it's documented because I'm right. I'm right. And, you know, whether you like my tone or not or whatever it may be, I'm on the side of the human race, regardless of who you are, what color you are, or what you uh, prefer to be called as some pronoun. It, whoever you are, I'm on your side to make sure you have justice. I will never, ever attack anybody of any origin, of any kind, of where they think or anything, if there's not proof. And you shouldn't either protect the sanctity of the ability to have all the information. How many times have you been wrong? How many times you were so sure that you were right and then you were wrong? Have you never been in that situation? That's, that's how easy the brain can be manipulated. I've been wrong so many times in my life. But it's always been, I've been manipulated in, in some article I read or uh, just information I was given and I was regurgitating in some capacity and I, I, I was I was so sure of it. And then I was proven wrong and I'm like, freak. That's what, that's what happens with age. A 20-year-old me was a moron and said a lot of dumb things. I say a lot of dumb things today, but I was a moron. Why? Because I was young and dumb. Who's the social justice warriors? Young people. They're young and dumb and a lot of followers of all ages, but you're young and dumb. So as you're young and dumb, allow the process of an investigation so people can, of all sides can be heard. And that's Coach Cameron's thoughts on today's major update of Rick Chance coming back. Good luck, Rick. I hope you win a championship, please, because if you lose a game, I see that you're getting fired because you are guilty according to the confusion that was created. Goodbye.